Okay, so um, that was all talking about our sort of traditional modeling methodology, building our model based on present day data and projecting into a, a different time period. The second method is to use evidence directly from the time period we're interested in and try and build a model based on uh, paleo data. So I'm going back to the Martinez Meyer paper from 2004 because they did exactly this. So you remember that they had five observations of fossils for, I forget the species, for the Pleistocene. Okay. So last time around, they built using present day data and they projected into the past. But they also did the same thing, but sort of the other way around, the inverse. They had five points for distribution <coughs> data, and they built a niche model based on those fossil observations and the paleoclimate reconstruction at that time. Yep. So this is their model built was paleo observations plus paleoclimate. And this was their reconstruction of uh, suitable habitat at that time. You remember uh, that point up there. Um, <coughs> So then they took that model and then they projected it into present day climate. Yeah. So here is the model built on paleo uh, data and projected into present day climate. And then they looked at where they felt was suitable based on the model and then they looked at present day distribution. Okay. So in many ways, you know, this is direct evidence of the uh, suitability at that time, rather than our inference based on our model. So if you've got fossil data, this sort of two-directional modeling can be really interesting. Okay? And here you see that uh, a lot of the um, southern areas are just completely outside of the um, uh, uh, protected uh, uh, suitable area. Did they use phylogeny to cast this is This is one species, the same species in the present and in the past. Nothing to do with phylogeny. Yeah, but they, so they didn't do something to track it. Like you, um, more diverse, yes, more, more diverse populations where it would be more stable. And the new prediction, and they predict now that yeah. certain part that there could be new populations there, and they didn't test that with phylogeny. Right? No, no, but not, they didn't not, have not, that not Okay, so then what they did is they put the, the two things together, okay? So you can compare. Uh, uh, which way around is this? This is the uh, past paleo data, paleo build, <coughs> present day projection, present day build, paleo projection, and then compare. Uh, sorry, so we, want to, we really want to compare this and this, because this is present day, this is present day, this is uh, paleo, and this is paleo. Okay? So we have two methods to reconstruct our suitable habitat in the past. Okay? And these are our two solutions. Yeah. They are <coughs> similar but not the same. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, the number of dots, yellow dots, is it uh, proportional to the number of the uh, samples? This is the number or of samples. Or the number of It's yeah. actually a very small number. Yeah. So, <laughs> Beware of small number of records. Yeah, so um, when we're looking at this sort of thing, a big problem is it's great if we've got fossil evidence yeah, to show distributions. Main species don't fossilise at all. <laughs> the ones that do, you know, it's very difficult to get multiple records, yeah? So we very rarely get fossils 
and the fossils we do get, we don't get very many of them. Okay. So we're, we're sort of we're really struggling, and we're always going to struggle with this sort of thing because of the availability of fossils. Okay. So um, the, the, the the better examples with more data um, are based on fossil pollen. The problem with fossil pollen is that it's difficult to identify fossil pollen to the species level. So what you're comparing is the genera rather than species. There are a few species that are sort of really distinct, but that it's, it's very difficult to get on the test. So we compare our reconstructions based on our two sort of different directions of modeling. Do we reconstruct the same areas as suitable? We can test for it. If it's different, is this evidence of a niche shift or adaptation? It's, it's certainly worth uh, a discussion. But we need to be aware of small data sets. Okay? When in, in this direction, having a few records for validation, generally speaking, is safer, yeah, because we can say whether we predict them or not. But building a model based on a small number of data points, that's where we are on really shaky ground. Okay. So uh, the question is is this a is this sort of different evidence of uh, adaptation? So let's just uh, spend a little bit of time thinking about the theory. So um, here we've got uh, our dotted line shows um, the. Uh, let me just recall what these are. The um, dotted line shows the fundamental niche, okay, in environmental space. The little dots show the realised niche, okay, where the where the species actually occurs. Here's our past conditions. Here's our current conditions. Okay? We can build a model based on these data. And this is what that model might look like. We can build a model with our present. And this is what it might look like. And ideally, these things can match up and we're happy. Yeah? Our model based on our uh, paleo um, realised niche looks similar to that based on our um, present day realised niche. But we can have a bunch of different um, scenarios that, that might lead us to reconstruct different um, models. So in this instance, the fundamental niche during our two time periods is the same, but the realised niche might be different. Okay? So in this case the fundamental niche is the same, but we only see our species in some environmental area okay? that is different to the present, but still within the species fundamental niche. Okay? So the, 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 the possible environmental um, suitable area. Okay? And that might be because the climatic conditions are different and we just don't see this kind of environmental space appear in an accessible area to our species. Yeah. And we've got the sort of converse case in uh, uh, the present day. Okay. But the fundamental niche is the same, it's just that our species is occupying a sort of different area of that fundamental niche. So I realise these are different. And obviously, in this case, if we build our model based on our present day realised niche, we're going to have something like this, where we don't predict our paleo distribution very well, not because the fundamental niche has changed, but just because the realised niche is what we're using to build our model, and so we get a mismatch. So, just because when we do our model and we project into a different path and we don't exactly match, that's not necessarily evidence for um, adaptation to the climate conditions. 
it might just be that the fundamental niche is the same, but the realised niche is different in our two different time periods. And of course, the converse can be true as well, where we've got niche adaptation, but so imagine in the, in this case, <coughs> the um, sorry, imagine in this case, the fundamental niche has changed. Back as you can see, the fundamental niche has changed past to present, but we reconstruct a good model that matches. I say a good model, but the fundamental niche has changed, but we get a good match. So just because our model predicts the distribution, we've got these two different theoretical um, explanations as to why we get a good match even though the fundamental niche has changed and there is adaptation, or we get a, a bad match but the fundamental niche is the same and it's just the realised niche that has changed. So our models I sort of point us in the direction, but they're not direct evidence that say the fundamental niche is the same. But if we get a good match, um, possibly, um, uh, uh, you know, um, it's sort of uh, evidence that it helps us uh, believe that the, 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 that we're really um, we, we, we're showing niche conservatism. But we can't, we can't say that. So, okay. so uncertainty is the sort of underlying, uh, underlying thing, uh, principle for this kind of model. Okay. So, um, just to sort of um, reiterate um, that within a population, this is our response variable uh, of. Uh, how much a species like this environment is our environment. Okay? We expect this sort of um, bell curve where we've got some optimum, um, we've got some populations at the edge at, at one end of our uh, environmental extreme, and we've got some populations at the other edge. Now, if over uh, different time periods, these populations drop out, what we're left with is populations that uh, only a, a, a limiting part of the full potential environmental range. But if we, if we just have this as evidence, then the curve that we can reconstruct in terms of suitability is going to look very different. Okay. So we can get niche drift, not <coughs> because of any adaptation, but just because of the availability of the habitat and the populations that we see inhabiting those different environmental spaces. Okay, and finally, um, projecting models of putative ancestors into paleoclimate reconstructions. That's the subject for this afternoon because that takes a lot longer to explain. Finally, um, there's this uh, nice review paper um, by Sarah Barrella and Jorge uh, Lobo and Joe Pippotan that uh, lists some examples of studies that have done niche modelling using paleoclimate reconstructions and they summarise. Um, uh, summarizing studies, so this is a good source of, of, of references if you're interested in these things. Um, I'm deeply interested in um, this, this column because it, it, it describes whether the paleoclimate data is upscaled and what methodology is used for upscaling. And um, most, of, most of these studies, so this long line, you can't read it, but this long line says current local climate is used to help interpret <coughs> paleoclimate. So this is the coarse grids plus the fine grids <coughs> equals paleoclimate reconstructions. This is the thing I said I like and stuff. Most of the studies, well, the majority of the studies have used that methodology. Anyway.
this, this paper is on the Dropbox, so uh, have a look if you're interested. And that, I think that's tea time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Half an hour.